Hey you going guys, Steve here from Australian Football for Adventures. You guys have been asking this one for a while. So we've got the Ar Armax Safari ECU unit. Pretty good thing. The Unichip X. Also a pretty good thing. So I've uh, donated my car. We're taking off the Safari, putting on the Unichip. We're going to have a side-by-side -side comparison. So run it, run it up with this, run it up with this, run it standard, show you guys the results, and we can literally get a, an answer to the debate. Which one's going to be better? Let's have a quick look around first, shall we? Okay, so first things first, for the long-term followers, I have got rid of the Safari and I've gone to the Unichip UniX um, ECU modules. There's a good reason behind it as well, and there's a bit of a story. I'm not going to try and bore you with it too much, but I am going to have to explain it to give you a reason behind why I've changed. Um, for anyone who's new to this video as well, maybe think about subscribing, do everything uh, 200 series, four-wheel driving, anything outdoorsy stuff. That's what the channel's about. So maybe uh, click the subscribe button, smash that little uh, bell down there as well to get notifications for all the videos coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Enjoy it. Okay, so to explain the story, I kind of have to go back to the very be beginning of my YouTube channel, so to say. So I, I um, had my car pumped from Stuart. He, he knew Safari. They wanted to put a, a um, Safari ECU on his car. He didn't want it. He put them onto me and then they offered it to me. Originally they offered, offered it to me at half price, which is about two and a half grand. That was including the snorkel as well. I said no, I didn't want to spend the money on it. I wasn't really chasing more power, so it wasn't really something I was, I was running after. I did offer to, to do a video for them and they just had to find someone else to, to pay the two and a half grand. I'll do the video, go on my channel. So it'll be the same setup, but someone else will be paying their money, not me. Um, very next day they got back to me, no, no, we'll give it to you for free. Come and do the video, do whatever you want to do. Cool, went down there, done it. Went well, um, obviously I'll put some of the footage up of, of the install. You guys would have seen the video anyway. Uh, as far as the product goes, and I, I do have to say this as a bit of a, bit of a disclaimer, because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong with a Safari ECU. It's a good product. I don't have a drama with it at all. It's good for what you get. Not so much what you pay, I think they're overpriced. So from that point, done the video, everything was happy, happy days, no dramas. They made me, it's the only time I've ever let anyone do it and I'll never let it happen again. They made me change part of the video because they weren't happy with it. That really annoyed me at the time, but I'd done it. Um, they're, essentially they're, their dyno stuffed up, and I put that in the video. They didn't want it in the video because, oh no, we can't have anything going wrong. That's not the way it's allowed to be to be shown. I thought that was a bit deceitful because if stuff goes wrong, stuff goes wrong, that's fine, but be honest about it. Um, but they made me take it out, and I, and I did. I've, I've regretted it the whole time ever since. So every other video and every other review I've ever done, first thing I say to people, my video is my video. I'm not gonna change it whatsoever. And every other person's been absolutely satisfied with that ever since. Uh, so I've done that video. Not long after, I'd done the, I'd done the video with Dave Dash down at Unichip. Because he was coming out from Adelaide. It was actually the first time I'd ever met him in person. Went down there, had my camera in the car because it's always in the car. I decided I was going to help him film his dyno video of him getting the Unichip fitted to his Y62. There was nothing else to it other than that. Done that, helped him out. Was going to give him the footage. Just a good fun afternoon because it's five minutes from my work. When I got in, the guys at Unichip, nice guys, good, good to talk to, everything else, they knew I had the Safari, no, no bad words to be said, okay, cool, you've got that, that's it, there was, it was nothing bad about it. They've said, oh, do you guys want to chuck your car on the, both of your cars on the dyno, sort of side by side, and just see, see who makes the most power? Clearly they're two different cars, they're always going to make different power, we knew that, but it was just to, to make a video, they offered to do it for us. Cool, thanks guys, so we've done that, happy days, was, was no drama. Put the video out. And I got a phone call from one of the owners at Safari, angry as all hell at me, 
because I was promoting a Unichip product over a Safari product for that video. I'll link it up here in the description, up here in the corner and down in the description down below, so have a read through there and you'll see the video. Not once did I say I like Unichip or anything else in the video. I was conscious of it because I, I knew they'd given, given me the product for free. I didn't want to go outside the, uh, outside the rules, so to say. But anyway, they cracked shoots at me. They threatened to take the, the kit off my car. Um, they were going to come get it all and take it all back and everything else. They gave me a receipt for the product, even though it said zero dollars. The product was mine. I didn't hear anything from him for ages. He just left me alone and everything was sweet. From that point, couple, uh, probably six months later, I put the exhaust on my car. Um, the the talk of the exhaust video up here and down in the description down as well. Um, the owner, I'm not naming names because I don't want to get in trouble for any sort of defamatory thing. So one of the owners, if you're watching this, you know who you are. Um, one of the owners actually called me up and said, look, uh, we've been still following your stuff. We've noticed you put the exhaust on your car. You're going to need to update your map. Oh, okay, cool. So they're being conscious. Good on them. They've actually done the right thing. Um, I didn't want to go in there because I didn't trust them at the time that they wouldn't take it off my car pretty much so I said all right how about we do your your online feature thing where you log in the, log into the computer and um and update the map on over the internet yeah great no drama so I recorded the thing made a whole video about how to, how to update your map um remotely video up here and down in the description I keep saying I've made a lot of videos so this is where it gets a little bit funny so I'd message them saying hey you guys want to reach you in this they said Look, yeah, you can bring it down, we'll have a look at it, but we don't feel it's going to be doing too much. But yeah, happy to have a look at it for you. Cool. I said, oh, would you mind if I come down and fil film it all as well? And I just got back a, a flat, no, we don't, we don't let anyone in filming anymore unless it's on an open day. Which I know is a bunch of crap, because I've seen other YouTube channels down there filming stuff, getting everything done to their cars because they're in favour with them. So I just thought that was really funny considering the last one of the last conversations we had was he was going to come and take, take all the stuff off my car. I didn't feel comfortable leaving my car down there. He, had, he told me I had to leave it there unattended. Um, it needed to be left there for half a day. Wasn't allowed to be there. Wasn't allowed to film it. Everything just didn't seem right to me. So I wasn't comfortable leaving it down there. So for me, that was the end of, end of the relationship. I wasn't willing to try anymore. That's why I wanted to have a look at what the YouTube had to offer. Um, a common thing in the industry is that, you know, you've got to get it custom tuned, yep. right? But we do that for you. Yep. That's, you know, the the, these files that we create yep. are not conservative. Yep. A lot of people go that, oh, you're creating a generic map. Well, it's not. Yep. We put a lot of time and research into these files yep. and we test them across multiple cars. Yep. We know that there's no difference. Yep. Um, and it's optimized perfectly yep. for that application. Yep. You change your hardware fitted to the vehicle, yep. we change the file. Yep. So you don't have to go and have it retuned yep. because we've done all that yep. hard work for you. So, so since I go bang an exhaust on there, bring it back here, you guys go, all right, cool, plug it in. Which do, is a load of different do, files. Do magic it. and yep. all of a sudden it's... 60 it's seconds. Of and the results go. we yep. see from your car is exactly what I expected. Yep. Right, we make on on a normal car here 146, 147 kilowatts. That's standard. Exactly yeah. the same. You go and get my car, it'll make exactly the same. You get Jason's, it'll make exactly the same. Yep. Ended up talking to the guys at the full drive show and just sort of explained that whole situation that I've just explained to you guys, and they've just gone, bring it down to us. We'll chuck one of our units on on there for you. No obligation. You don't have to do a video. You don't have to promote it. You don't have to do anything about it. Just come down, fit it. Because obviously you're just having a hard time with Safari and we don't like people not enjoying their experience with their car. Okay, I, I, I found it hard to understand at the time that they didn't want anything out of it. But it was just a come down, do it if you want to, great. If not, great. Okay, cool. So I went down there, spoke, spoke to the guys down there and they fitted up the new Uni-X for me, so the waterproof version of the, of the Uni-Chip. The results speak for themselves, to be honest with you. I'll go through the results soon. But I'm happy with the with the Unix and I will be sticking with it. As far as the Safari unit goes, as I said before, I don't think it's a bad thing. I've actually given it to my old man. He's just put it onto his 200 series now. Um, as far as I know, he's happy as Larry with it. I wouldn't give a product away, especially to a family member, if I didn't think that it was a good, safe product overall. So don't get me wrong. Anyone who's bought one based on what I've said before, I still think they're a really good product. But I think this is better now that I've, that I've experienced both. 
So, how about, rather than just listen to me ramble on for a bit more, how about we go back into the dyno rooms, I'll show you what the three runs are, so the, the standard run, so no tune whatsoever, as in uh, Safari out, uh, Unichip out, just the standard car. Just a few details on what the car is itself, so it's a 2013 twin turbo diesel 200 series. It's a 285 7017 mud terrain tyre, so they're nearly a 33 inch tyre. It's the twin three and a half inch torquid exhaust all the way through, and obviously the Johnny Tig top man intercooler and scoop together. That's pretty much the only performance mods that I've, that I've got on the car. Well, mind you, the tyres kind of take away from it a bit, but you know. So, how about we run through the, the standard run first? Let's have a quick look at that one. Okay, so you just seen the two on the, on the dyno there. Doesn't have the figures up on the screen because I've got them right here. So the standard run on the 33s with all the modifications I've got done to it with no ECU tuning whatsoever, it was 118 kilowatts and 515 newton meters of torque at the wheel. So that's stock standard. That's pretty much the same as what I got when I was at Safari. Um, the main difference what they done is they actually put, maybe put smaller tyres on the car. They maybe go back down to the 265s as opposed to the 285s I'm running as, as my standard, which, which goes back to my, my story about how they've got a standard map that they don't custom tune because they need to make sure that their standard map is doing the right thing based on what their, the, the size tyre that they tested on. So there's no custom there. Okay, second run. So this one is the Safari ECU. For this one, I'll show you what I got at Safari as well on the day. Keep in mind that was on 265 tyres and road tyres as well. They claim it's partly because of um, uh, vibration through the, through the dyno. Very well true, but anyway, beside the point. So, okay, so that's the Safari. Now at Dynamotive, um, before we touched anything, we chucked it straight on the dyno, made sure the car was warm, it was up, up to temperature, it was in the power map mode. Um, everything was as as per what it's meant to be to run it up on a power power run for a dyno. So anyone who says oh, I've tried to fudge figures, no, we haven't. We've tried to do it the exact same way. So the funny thing is, when I done the dyno with Dave Dash six months ago at Dynamotive, I got pretty much the exact same figure then as what I did now. So let's have a quick squeeze of what what it looks like with the um, with the Safari on at Dynamotive now. Okay, so now, so the figures on that one are 144 kilowatts at the wheels and 620 newton meters at the wheels for torque. That's almost identical to what I got six months ago at Dynamotive. So I think I got 146 last time, but this time it's 144. So two kilowatts difference. That's pretty much identical for what you're going to get. Okay, now, the Unichip X. Uh, the, the new Uni X is 100% waterproof and dustproof, so it's identical to what the Safari is going to be there. So probably the main feature over the Safari that the Uni X has is actually the Bluetooth connectivity for the for the map selection side of it. You get the same five map selection as what you do with the Safari, but the Safari is only by a, by a dash switch, which I've actually opted for the switch for the for the Uni chip as well, purely because I already had the hole in the dash. I wanted to fill up the dash. That was it. The Bluetooth module is, is pretty cool. You, you log in through your phone and you can change all the all the maps on your phone based on what you want. So you can have a, a power map, an economy map, an off-road map, um, another map. Uh, my fifth one is actually an immobiliser one, so if I put it on to number five, you can start the car, but it, it's got no throttle whatsoever, it just won't go. So it's kind of a, a, a little bit of a fail safe unless someone knows exactly what, what they're doing, especially if you've got the Bluetooth version. You can't actually get it out of that unless you Bluetooth app it and change it back to your, a, a drivable map instead of just the immobiliser app. Okay, probably the biggest reason why you should choose the Unichip X over the Safari RMAX ECU, the price. My opinion, the RMAX is way, way overpriced for what you get. And I've said this to plenty of people before who, who know I've got, I've got the unit for free. If I had to pay for it, I wouldn't get it. 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't, even after having it on the car and everything else, if someone said to me, we're going to take it back and the only way you're going, to, you're going to get it back is if you pay for it, I wouldn't pay for it. It's, I don't think what you get out of it is worth $5,000 almost. Granted, that was including the snorkel. But essentially, it's a $4,000 ECU with a $1,000 snorkel on the side. So $5,000 worth of equipment for essentially what was an extra 35 kilowatts at the wheels. Essentially. The UniX supplied, fitted, tuned, custom live tuned as well, and five tunes of your choice. So if you want a power map, an off-road map, economy map, a towing map, and then um, I know someone who got a, a winching version of it. So essentially they put into that and it just holds the revs at, I think it was 1800 RPM. So it's, it's essentially it just keeps the revs up the whole time that you can do, do, do winching a little bit e easier that way. Not a bad idea. I went with the immobilizer version of, for me. So for two and a half thousand dollars, as opposed to the five thousand dollars, so it's pretty much half the price, you get the UniX completely waterproof, same features, same fa safety features, and let's have a look at the power difference, shall we? Let's just quickly run to the dyno now, and we'll ha and have a look at the power difference. I'll see you back in a second. Okay, so that was a dyno. You would have seen the GoPro footage there or looking at the actual dyno graph. You might not have seen the figures, but I've got them here. So rest assured, I'm gonna tell you what it is. So, stock standard, no tune at all, 118 and 550 newton meters. The Safari was 144 and 620 newton meters. The Uni X in the power run was 166.6 and 785 newton meters. So it's another 20 kilowatts above what the Safari is with half the amount of cost spent on the car. So that's that's a no-brainer for me, personally. Um, there's also a big difference in the way that the power is delivered. So with the Safari, for some reason, it, I'll, put, I'll put a picture of the dynograph up on, on, the, on the screen now. So you'll be, able to, you'll be able to see there with the RMAX one, it's, ma it's making power from, from the very start, going up, going up, going up, gets to 3,000 RPM, and it has a bit of a spike. So between 3,000 and 3,200, it has a bit of a spike of power there, and that's its max power. So that's that 144 right at the top there. But you've got to be flogging the guts out of the car to make it, to make it get there. So three and a half thousand RPM for a diesel, it's it's not completely flogging it, but it's up in the top end of the range of where you're, where you're putting the power. Where if you look at the the Uni X one, essentially you've almost got full power all the way from 2200 RPM. So that's up around about the 160 kilowatts or 163 kilowatt ish at 2200 RPM. And then at 2750 RPM, that's when it's at its max power and then it starts to drop off. So essentially what that correlates to in real terms is drivability of the car. It's probably the biggest thing I've noticed overall. I haven't really noticed the extra power as such. Yes, I can feel it, but it's not a massive thing for me. But the drivability of where that power is delivered is huge. Just not having to flog the car, it's just got so much more pull. It's like a 14 year old just figure out how to do it. <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that. I'll put that in anyway. Um, so not only is it more power, more torque, cost less, drives better, same safety features, better function functionality with technology for Bluetooth, Bluetooth connectivity, to boot, the biggest thing that I reckon I'd loved about the uni Unichip experience so far, the people. The people down there are absolutely fantastic. They've bent over backwards to do absolutely everything for me. The, the big central trip we just done, just got back and I got an engine code come on. Pretty much the day we got back, had an engine, engine code come on. Went to a couple of different places, they couldn't figure it out for me, too busy to sort me out straight away, so I was gonna go back a, a week later. Um, called up Unichip and just said, oh, I've got this, I don't, I don't wanna bother you, everything else. And said, no, no, bring it down, we'll sort it out for you. Not a word of a lie, they had the car for an hour and a half and they said, yep, it's done, we've sorted that. So, so wow. Um, I had other people talking about stepper motors and turbos and everything else, all this stuff, stuffing up the car, is gonna cost me thousands. All it was, was some, some water and some dust that got into a, a factory connection, nothing to do with the, um, with the uni chip at all, because it's all completely waterproof. A factory connection underneath the driver's side headlight there, 
um, had some corrosion inside it and was giving us a fault code for the turbos which is making it seem like the turbos were wrong but it, all it was was the connection these guys just know cars inside and out enough that they can do that just like that so for me that's that that's worth money alone just just for that knowledge by itself so in summary the reason I left Safari wasn't because of the product, it was because of the people. I don't want to support a company that treats me or any other customer, because I've, I've heard quite a few other customers haven't had great experiences with, with some of them there. I want to support a company that supports its, its clients and gives you the after sales support that you need and, and deserve as a customer well down the track, once warranties are out of, out, of, out of way and everything else, I just want to deal with good people that just want to help people out. That's who I want to support. That's the main reason I've, I've changed over from Safari. I don't want to support their product because I don't think they're nice people. Unichip, absolute legends. Love your work so far. We're going to be going places. So guys, if you're looking for something for your car, definitely look at the UniX. Amazing bit of kit. See you in the next one. Have a good one, guys.